Okay, another week without all that much being done. <laughs> uh, I glued together my utility arms here. Now, these are two pieces that are glued together. Uh, they also take nuts and bolts to hold them together, which I haven't put in yet. And then there are square and round pegs that you print and glue in place there and then sand flush with the top. Um, the ones I printed drop all the way in there so they don't come in contact with the edges. So I could put glue in there but it's not the pegs aren't actually going to be touching the outside edges so I think I'm going to try reprinting those at maybe 101 percent and see if that gets it to the point where the edges are actually touching so when it glues it's gluing plastic to plastic and not just the glue acting as a filler in between two pieces of plastic um, this is part of the third ring of the body, which I haven't really done much prep work on yet. I brought it out here just to show how this stuff goes together. Uh, these bearings, 606ZZ, these are the same size bearings, smaller bearings that are used in the Mark III foot drives. So they go in here uh, on both sides. Now the instructions say they should be a tight fit, and they're not for me. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem, but just like with the foot drives, they didn't seem as tight as they should be, so... I'm hoping it's not going to be an issue. Um, once you get those in there, utility arms go in like that. And this is the Mark III body, Mark III Ring Three. so the version 2 is different than this. Um, this piece that I printed in PETG goes down in there. It's currently just a bit too large to fit into the opening. Um, this is printed in PETG plus, or no, that this is just PETG. Uh, sorry, this is PLA, <laughs> this is PETG. Um, so this goes down, and that's where those two bearings are. There's one above this uh, gear end, and then there's one below it, and this goes through. So that what you end up with is the utility arm swings in and out on two bearings. The bottom is similar, except it uses that pin on the bottom. These are attached to servos. These mounts are printed. They're in the model. They hold the correct servo. Um, you'll have to look at the uh, uh, Mark III body instruction files. I didn't memorize what the uh, servo type is that uh, fits in there. But you screw this onto the servo, mount the servo, and it should line up with this geared part of the utility arm, which again has the bearings above and below. And as the servo rotates, it rotates the white gear 
and the white gear meshes with the utility arm gear and that's what makes the utility arm open and close. So that's how that assembly works and that's another advantage to the Mark III design is it's got these built-in servo mounts and it's, it's simply servo and then this gear screwed to the top of the servo instead of a servo arm to operate the utility arms instead of the old design that I believe used servos and then arms that activated the uh, utility arms in and out. So this way it's much more compact and there aren't uh, 3D printed arms sticking across from servos to the utility arms. It's all a compact unit, so that was a nice design change for the Mark III. Um, as far as cleanup, I mean these these are fitting nice, which I really like. They're not they're not too tight. They're not really too loose, but there is a fair amount of cleanup to do in the openings if you want to make them look really nice. Um, you can see there as it's printing it at an angle it's got some stair stepping there as well. It's not a smooth straight line without adding some filler. Um, I took a small piece out of it. Also when you're printing this piece um, it prints with built-in supports in this area, um, large columns all the way across that you need to pull out either by putting a screwdriver in there, popping them out, or using pliers. Um, I think if I remember right, I used a utility knife and I kind of worked on the seams where the supports were bonded to the top and bottom and just kind of went over them a little bit and then got some pliers and slowly rocked it back and forth. I think that's how I, if I remember right, how I took all the supports out of this part of the file. And like I said, apart from that one little chunk there, it's, it's not that bad other than, again, there are areas that, all of those areas basically I'm going to it looks like there's another tiny chunk that came out there too. Um, all of these areas I'll be putting filler in and sanding to make them uh, nice and smooth. Same thing with the arms. They are, like I said, there's bolts that go into them to help hold them together, but they are primarily glued together. Um, each one of these has, I think it's one, two, three, four, five. I think there's five different areas where there are small holes for filament. Fits uh, some filament, so you can put a little tiny piece of filament in all the holes on one side and then put glue on everything. And then when you put the other side on, the filament helps line things up. So. Um, these are just glued. The only thing I sanded before gluing, I sanded the parts that mate together with some 220 grit to make sure they were fairly flat and to rough up the plastic a bit to get the glue to stick. So now I'm going to have to fill some of the areas, especially this skinny piece that's hard to clamp here where it's angled. Um, not quite glued perfectly together so we'll be sanding the seams down filling in the spacing and then you can also kind of see in this light the vertical bars of the infill so I'll be putting some filler across all of the all of the piece on the outside at the at the least on the outside I don't know if I'll do the inside because I don't think they open up far enough that anyone's really going to even see the inside 
So definitely all of the outside needs to be looking really nice to make it look like it's one piece and not two pieces glued together. And then also the top and bottom and these holes because you will you will see those. So sorry I didn't get more of this done. Again, not that much time this week. Um, these, again, I'll have to sand these a little bit to get them to go into place. And my bearings fit a little bit loose in the ends where they're supposed to fit tight, but again, I don't think that's a problem. Um, I might need to add a washer to the bottom if the ones that are on the bottom want to fall and sit too low. I might put a small washer in there just to get them so they're not resting on the bottom of the plastic. We'll see. It might be okay the way they are. They might, might be just fine once I get the pins in there. So yeah, that's uh, about it for this week. Short video.